Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Playoff predictions. Playoff predictions. Everybody in the land loves the playoff predictions, right? All right. Today, I'm going to be doing Eastern Conference. And uh, you might have noticed me from the other videos. I do a lot of trade videos. I just did some toughest free agents assigned videos. All of those sort of things like that. But we're, it's playoff time. So we got to be hitting up some playoffs. Everybody, I got all your letters in the land. Thank you. Guido went down to the mailroom and brought up the sack of letters. And we all went around the letter table and did a little pearl dance. Woo! And read your letters. And uh, you're all wondering what my playoff predictions are. So we're going to get into it. First, you're going to sub up to the channel. Right? Unless you haven't already. I, 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 I'm sure everybody in the land is sub by now. But if for some reason you haven't, this is a good time to do it. Just touch it. Just touch it. It makes you feel good on your insides, I find. I, sometimes I don't even, just for the heck of it, I just, just touch it. Okay. So we got lots to talk about. Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, I'm going from a uh, ESPN. I'm going to look at an ESPN PN article. Uh, which basically tells you a few stats. And then we're going to go into each team, their rosters, and why I think who's going to win and all of those sort of things like that. So let's get at it. All right, there we go. There's the ESPN article right there. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. Florida Panthers versus the number four seeded or number four Washington Capitals. Um 58, 18, and 6, 122 points for the Florida Panthers. Uh, Capitals, 100 points. And Jonathan Huberto, probably the most underrated guy, a winger in the game because he's in Florida and nobody pays attention, had 115 points in the Capitol. And Ovechkin, of course, got his 50th. Good for him. Good for you, my friend. I know you're watching out there, Ovechkin. Here's uh, some pearls for you, my friend. You deserve it. You deserve it. What are you, like 57 years old now, scoring 50 goals? Probably will be. Probably play till he's 57. You heard it here first. Um, okay. So everybody in the land is probably going to be taking Florida to win this series. Uh, they've had a mon they had a monster year. And... I'm leaning that way too, but I want to say a little bit first before I get into that. I think Florida's got a has done a really good job of getting guys that you may consider as playoff style players. One of them was Sam Bennett from the Calgary Flames a little while ago. Calgary, for some reason, wouldn't play Sam Bennett high high up in the lineup, and I think it was because they wanted to save him so he had full force in the playoffs. Watch Sam Bennett in the playoffs. He's a freaking beast. He's a warrior in the playoffs. He's, he's one of those guys. As long as he's got enough in him, because he played a lot of games this year for him, and a lot of minutes, 16 minutes a night, uh, for him. In Calgary, he never played that much. And he had tons of time, room, tons of energy come playoff time. So it'll be interesting to see what he looks like in the playoffs. Um Alexander Barkov is one of the best two-way guys in the league. He doesn't have tons of playoff experience, <coughs> but he's a playoff-type performer. Plus, they've got Mason Marchment, Sam Reinhardt. All of these guys have a playoff-type player feel to them. And you're, um, Aaron Ekblad should be back on the roster again, 57 points in 61 games. This guy's got to get one Norris before it's all over, doesn't he? 6'4", 215, beast! With Mackenzie Weger on, on that same. And uh, Forsling and Gudas will be an interesting watch. Forsling has um, improved so much from what he was a couple of years ago, uh, solidifying a top four spot. Radko Gudas is what people would call a playoff type performer. He's going to wear the opposition down, beat them down. And then, of course, you got Ben Sherrod to do the same thing. Now, Ben Sherrod isn't great defensively. A lot of people don't realize that, but he's not. He's not a great defensive player. They'll say, well, he blocks shots. And 
he has hits. Well, he hits out of position and he blocks shots because he spends too much time in his own zone. But he does beat people up. And that's important in the playoffs. So that's good. Um, Brandon Montour on his side can kind of help him get out of his own zone a little bit. He's, he's a pretty good possession guy. I like it. Um, and I think if you're looking against... Okay, before I go with that, I have an issue with the Florida Panthers. And that is, in the regular season, which doesn't say everything, but it can say something. I don't really look at records. I don't know what their record against Washington is. I honestly don't care. Again, I don't care what records are in the regular season. It doesn't matter to me. What I did see in the regular season for Florida was that when it was a low-scoring tight game, they seemed to lose a lot. Uh, they bailed themselves out a lot when they got down and had to come back up and score four goals against a team that's not playing with them on our like in the regular season you're playing against a team and then you don't play them for weeks. Here you're going to be playing against a team that's going to get to know your tendencies, it's going to know your tricks, and it's going to know your weaknesses. And I think Florida's weakness is if you can keep up to their speed and play a shutdown type 1-1-3 trap game in the playoffs, I think they could have a difficult time against certain foes. However, and just get a lot of rubber on this guy right here. Just get a lot of rubber on this guy right here. Let's try to bring Spencer Knight and Sergey Bobrovsky. Get a lot of rubber on him, man, because he is inconsistent as all heck. He was all year. And that's my biggest concern, not only with the series, but Florida down the road. A lot of people are taking Florida to win a cup this year. I am not. And those are the two reasons. So do I think that they're going to uh, lose to the Washington Capitals? I, I mean, Florida is extremely deep. You've got Marchment Lundell, who's been a beast as a rookie on the third line this year. He's looking like he could be like another Barkoff, which is just stupid. Uh, Mason Marchment was almost a point a game in Reinhardt. I mean, yeah, on paper, these, this team looks absolutely freaking stacked. That's why Washington, they're playing Washington. And Washington's defense has not been great all year. And that's my problem here. Um, they can play a trap-type system. Though. I've seen them do it in the regular season where they will trap a team down and shut them down, um, which probably will give them a game here uh, against Florida. But Florida will probably end up making adjustments and exposing guys like Justin Schultz, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, Nick Jensen. I mean, this is not a stellar lineup. Uh, Farhervy has been very good this year, but he's still 22-year-old uh defensemen that they're playing in their top two most teams like in florida for instance he wouldn't be in the top two uh john carlson was always great on the power play that's the one thing that as long as florida stays out of the box because you know you've got alexander ovechkin because nets off tom wilson's going to make it rough on everybody like usual love them love them love them but they don't have enough of them uh then you got marcus johansson tj oc's money in the playoffs it's just a question of how much opportunity he's going to have, get against this Florida team. That once you get down into the uh, Shiri, Eller, Mantha, they, they just eat them up. You know, I just mentioned Reinhardt, Lundell, Marchman. Against that line, not even close. And the fourth line as well. Johan Larson will be in. I don't know how. He's been hurt for a long time. Is he going to be healthy now? They haven't played together. I love Garnet Hathaway down there on the fourth line here. You know, there's a lot of places where Washington can do some damage, but it certainly ain't here. Vitek Vanacek had a 2.67 and a 9.08, and he's their best goaltender, and he's only 26 years old, and he has, like, virtually no playoff experience whatsoever. And then Ilya Samsonov was just absolutely horrible this year. Couldn't seem to get himself in the right spots. Uh, seemed out of, like, sometimes he looked like he was so far out of position that 
um, you know, he, he was going to be eating popcorn in the stands. Seriously, so bad. Reaching for pucks that were way going wide and putting himself out of position as it bounced off the boards and people scored. Like, so, so bad. So, my prediction is the Florida Panthers in five in that game. All right, what do we got next? Mr. ESPN. Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, leading scores, we know. Steven Stamkos. So you guys know that Steven Stamkos had over 100 points this year? The same amount of points as Mr. Austin Matthews. Did you know that? Yeah, Austin can potter at 60 goals. But Steven Stamkos has the same amount of points. Um, I don't Do I need to mention this? Like, everybody knows Maple Leafs' problems of getting out of the first round. Um, had a pretty stellar year considering their um, obvious difficulties on in goal. Uh, Jack Campbell started out really well, uh, had injury issues, confidence issues again that keep on creeping up, it seems, with Mr. Jack Campbell. Um, and then if he gets hurt, uh, you got Eric Schalger in there, like kid, 25 years old. He's not even a kid. He's a late-term rookie that, like, look at his numbers, 342.8886. It's all over for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, the, the biggest question here, uh, like, you would think that they would get a better fate than the Tampa Bay Lightning here. Especially the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. I think everybody will think that, feel that, you know, it's possible Tampa Bay could wear them down. Like any prognosticator will think that because they've had, they've won two cups. They had a short off season. Um, and maybe later on in their later rounds, they just won't have their legs anymore, which wouldn't surprise me. But in the first round, it's probably going to be okay. Um, so, we got Kerfoot up here. Who's still out? Oh, they're throwing Kerfoot with Matthews and Marner. Okay. And then Mikhaev, Taveros, and Kasha. Solid. Not, I mean, Kasha's back. How long is he going to be? He's injured more often than not. I know everybody has a problem with Mill William Nylander. He does. He seems to. He he leaves you with much more. He almost gets a point a game, and people are like le left thinking they could get more from Will William Nylander. But I mean, if you're going to beat Tampa Bay, you got to hope that William Nylander is there every game. So I wouldn't be putting him down here in this line. I put Kasha there. you you're, you're. It's not making that third line much better than it is. Seriously. You might as well stack up your top six and play the crap out of them against Tampa Bay, I would say. And maybe they will. I don't know. This is cap friendly. This seems to be the direction they've been going as of late, trying to get offense from their bottom lines. And uh, Clifford Blackwell and Spezza is a pretty good fourth line. Now, one thing I will say about Toronto is I think their defense is un grossly underrated. Uh, actually, I think their whole team defense is grossly overrated. I'm not going to – I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'm sure they're pretty high defensively, higher defensively than people would think. But Riley Morgan and Ilya Labushkin on the top line, I don't know. Is, is he going to be there? He has played well in Toronto, I have to say. Um, but Jake Muzzin and TJ Brody is, is pretty solid 4-5 or 3-4. And Giordano and Lilligren. Lilligren has been playing um, very well down the stretch. But, I mean, I think, I think Toronto's defense is better than a lot of people say that it is. And, of course, you've got Austin Matthews. And, of course, you've got Mitch Marner, who are beasts. And, so, you know, John Tavares, he's got a rebound from his injury last year um, to – be a stud performer in the playoffs this year. Uh, we'll see. You know, there's so many will sees with Toronto, and that's my problem because they're going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning, who you don't need to see 
There's no we will see here. This is, it's been done. It's been done. They've won the last two. You got Andre Palat, who kind of, you know, does this thing as 50 points in the regular season. But he's a beast in the playoffs all around. Seems to hit money a lot, score a lot of money goals. Steven Stamp goes coming in all sly. Like everybody forgetting about Steven Stamkos. Do, 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 do. I think Steven Stamkos is going to absolutely beast it out in the playoffs this year, man. He, uh, he, like I said, 106 points. Highest of his career, by the way. Of course, we all know about Nikita Kucherov. Just slips in halfway through the year and drops down a, you know, 100 and some point pace season. Just, bah, here we go. Guy, kid, guy's amazing. Uh, pick up Brandon Hagel. Hagel, he fits beautifully on that line with Sorelli and Point. There's your shutdown line, by the way. That's a shutdown line. Hagel, Sorelli, and Point. Oh, they're putting Point on the wing. Just stacking up all their best defensive players. And, of course, Braden Point's killer shot there to go up against Matthews and the gang. And uh, it's they're going to be a handful. Alex Kaloran Colton. Ross and Nicholas Palat. You want an energy line that will blow your mind right here? This is, this is a serious energy line. It's going to have offensive possession a lot of the time against, the, especially the lower lines of Toronto. Like when you look at Toronto's third line, Engvall, Kampf, and Nylander going up against Killorn, Col Ross, Colton, just a, a kid that's blossomed amazingly this year. And Nicholas Paul was a beautiful move out of Ottawa. Those guys are going to grind them down like freaking wheat, man. It's they're going to. It's it's not going to be pretty. And then if you want a fourth line, my God, man, Patrick Maroon, Pierre Bellamar, uh, Pierre Edward Bellamar, and Corey Perry. Is there a more annoying line in the league? This line is going to be all over their asses, verbally, physically beating them down psychologically. I don't think people are getting it. Like, Montreal, when it was last year with Corey Perry, he did it to everybody. I swear to God, one of the reasons why Shifley lost his mind was probably something Corey Perry said. And you've got Patrick Maroon is a wizard at that as well. They're going to slice these guys up and spit them out. I'm telling you, man. I, Victor Hedman, Ruda, McDonough, Cernak, Chernak, Six foot three, six foot two, Sergachev, Zach Bogosian. I'm not a huge fan of, but he can bring the pain. Sergachev is on your third pairing. Third pairing. He would be a top number one left winger on what? Twenty teams in the league, probably. I'd have to go through it. A lot of people. Um, there's a lot of people picking. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody picking the Leafs, but they're saying that this is going to be a seven-game series. I don't agree. I think Tampa Bay is going to absolutely destroy them. I'm saying Tampa Bay in five. This is going to be one of the worst exits that Toronto has had. I'll see if I, I – I'm very confident in that. I, I think Tampa Bay is – has been kind of taking it easy in the regular season. A lot of the games I've watched, they've been pacing themselves. You got Vasilevsky against Supi Campbell, who, I mean, if he's rocking, if he's rocking, I'll give Toronto maybe can take it to seven, but Campbell's got to be rocking because the rest of this lineup, the, the type of, the style that Toronto plays, that, High offensive possession type game where they're all over you like like flies on poop, which is great for a game here and a game there. And actually in the regular season, they were able to hold it up pretty well. I'll give them credit for that. Even when they were tired, they look good. But when you're playing against that Tampa Bay Lightning team at this size, if you try to play against them for seven games like that, you're going to see what happens. Florida saw what happened last year. And Toronto's going to see what happens this year. All right, next one. Carolina versus Boston. This is going to be one heck of a tough series. Um, 
the Bruins haven't been healthy all year, and they still managed to pull out 107 points. That's only like, you know, what, nine points less than the Hurricanes? Hurricanes have had their injury issues as well, mostly on goal, and that's really the problem more than anything here. Sebastian Ajo, this has got to be his breakout year, playoff-wise. He's got to hit, be able to hit the, he's got to hit the ground running and keep going. They need him like freaking crazy. We all know what we're gonna get from Brad Marchand. We all know what we're gonna get from Bergeron. These guys know how to win in the playoffs. So you got Svechnikov, 22 years old. He's got a couple games playoff experience, nothing too much. Same as Sebastian Ajo. You got a rookie in Seth Jarvis. Max Domi barely played any playoff minutes. Finch Trocek fall just absolutely goes, has historically in the playoffs he's played. I'll even take a look. I haven't been looking at each individual player, but I'll show you. His playoffs, three points in nine games. And then two points in eight games, both with Carolina. Didn't even make the playoffs with Florida before that. Oh, sorry, a couple games here. He just goes, he's like totally invisible in the playoffs, or at least he has been um, previous in previous years. So, Tulo Terravine and Vine, they, they've got a lot of depth. Jordan Stahl has a, has a Stanley Cup. Um, and Martinu Kokaniemi, Nietzsche's. The lineup here is beautiful in the regular season. I love Svechnikov, but these guys have to take a huge step up forward-wise against this Boston team. Playoffs are a different animal, man. You better come. Are they going to come to fight? Like, this is a systematically beautiful team to watch. Um, you know, Brenda Moore is an absolute genius, no doubt about that. But is this team ready? Is this team ready? Uh, they're top four. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, Brett Pesci. Uh, Slavin, D'Angelo. D'Angelo doesn't have much playoff experience either. I don't think, does he have any? That's the thing is this team is really not experienced yet. And I'll tell you, I've picked teams a lot. He's got three games playoff experience, D'Angelo. Slavin is Slavin. Slavin's amazing. One of the best in the league. Brad Pesci, great shutdown guy. Don't need to worry about him too much. And then you got, you know, Ian Cole's got playoff experience, and Brendan Smith has some as well. But honestly, that's the problem. I mean, their top four is fantastic. I love the way they play. Um, and then Anderson is out, and you got Antti Ranta there. <coughs> he could do it, man. Antti Ranta, when he goes on a run, he's amazing. The question is, though, the problem with Antti Ranta is he seldom can play a lot of games, a lot of games without going down with injury. He just consistently goes down with injury. And if he does, they're in big pro trouble here in Carolina because they're going to have Kutchuk cough. And whenever Anderson comes back um, week to week, like Anderson could be out for the whole playoffs. When he gets injuries, he's usually gone a long time. So, I mean, What's going for Carolina? A beautiful system by Brenda Moore. A lot of great, a lot of very good players. Um, you know, good depth scoring through their their lineup. Also, a great penalty kill. But the thing is, Boston has that too. And I know you guys are going to freak out here, and I and some very very like guys that I respect a lot, but Brad Marchand, Bergeron, and DeBrusque. Um, I, I have a feeling they'll put Pasternak back up on this line quite a bit in the playoffs. They'll go top heavy against Carolina. Um, we'll see if that actually happens. Hall, Halla, and Pasternak. The, those, I mean, Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak, those guys know what it takes to win cups. They've done it before. They know how to battle. 
They know how to go to war, especially Brad Marchand. Um, you got pretty good depth scoring. Halla is his effectiveness goes up in the playoffs as well. He's that type of player. And then if you then uh, you know Frederick, Fadeline, Charlie Coyle, Craig Smith. These guys are better. Or well, Smith anyways. Charlie Coyle. These guys are veteran grinders that are going to grind down the opposition. And th down in the bottom with Nick Felino, Noshik, and Lazar, same sort of thing. Forward-wise, I got to give it to Bo Boston, to tell you the honest truth, um, just for playoff experience and playoff-type players alone. Then Pampas, Lindholm, and McAvoy will play like minutes beyond minutes. Carlo, we got to see more from Carlo. Uh, he has not been great this year in the regular season, and uh, that's going to be the issue, I think. If there is an issue, is what's Brandon Carlo going to bring? They need him to be the beast that he can be. Uh, and if that solid top four is able to do that, then they won't have to play Forbert and Clifton that much, and, and really that they can't. So for this round, that sh may not be an issue. And then for goaltending, you have, you have Linus Allmark, who it's iffy. He started out a little rough, and then he played well down the stretch. But, I, he no, I don't even need to look. He doesn't have one playoff game, one game of playoff experience, right? No, not one. So that is the issue there. I don't know what – I don't know how Allmark is going to do with this playoff pressure. But I'm going off the board here, and I'm taking Boston in seven. I, I think Carolina is going to get their – uh, get another wake-up call this year um, that they need to get some playoff players on their team. I could see Carolina winning this just on system alone. Frindamore's system is amazing. If they're playing it perfectly, I don't know if Boston will be able to keep up. But I Boston knows how to wear down the opposition psychologically and physically. They've done it before. And... I'm gonna bank. I'm gonna bank here that Ranta goes down third or fourth game in the series. He's just a guy that always does. And if they do, they gotta go with the kid. And then I got Boston all day. So I could be wrong, but you're getting really good. Uh, they're they're the underdog. All underdogs. There's always underdogs every year. So I'm gonna go with that. Next. I guess Tampa Bay is an underdog too, which is mind blowing, to tell you the honest truth. But uh, they did. Toronto did have the better record in the regular season, so that's how she goes. All right, New York Rangers versus Pittsburgh Penguins, and this one I'm going to probably be a little shorter with, I suppose. The Rangers are just green. They're very young. Uh, All over. They, they they did do well to bring in some bets like Barkley Goudreau, who, of course, won a cup with Tampa Bay last year. Um, a lot of people didn't like that contract, said he got paid too much. Here he is now on the fourth line. He's a playoff guy, man. The guy just, he knows how to grind it down. And, and the playoffs, that's what it, it's all about. It's can you grind that opposition down? You can't just win on skill in the playoffs. It's a war of attrition. It's a seven-game series against the same team. They figure out all your weaknesses, and it just becomes a battle if you're doing it right. And that's the kind of guy you need. I mean, Tampa Bay knew they need him, needed him. They gave up a first to get him from San Jose when they got him. So I thought it was a good move. It's just a kind of guy that you need in the playoffs. Um, Kako, Philip Heedle, and Lafreniere. Look how young that line is. You got a kid line there. Kid line. They're going to go with the kid line. Nice energy line. Uh, that's kind of like the Oilers did that back in the day with Jelena. There's probably been other ones. Jelena, Graves, and who's the other one? Murphy. 
I think it was, kid line back then. Worked out really well for them. You keep their minutes down a little bit. Just go full bore high energy out there. And uh, I, I, like, I, I like that play. Um, Cop with Strom and Panarin. Nice combination there. Um, but what you're seeing here is, you know, Panarin doesn't have a heck of a lot of playoff experience. Um, Ryan, Ryan Strom doesn't either. Chris Kreider does to a certain extent. It, like, there's not much playoff experience here overall. But the team does play a solid playoff style game. For, uh, I haven't talked about coaches a lot here for either one of them. I did talk about Brindamore a bit in, my, in the last one. But Gallant got this team going earlier on. The Rangers were just relying on somebody, of course, we cannot not talk about Igor Shosturkin a lot. But later on, this team was playing way better defensively. However, the problem is they're not scoring a ton on five on five. They're not scoring a lot, period, actually. But fortunately for them, they got a beast top four. These guys don't have much experience. Lindgren, Fox, and Andre Miller. But I, I don't know if it, it may not matter. I don't like going with green teams too much. But they, they, they did, were in the playoffs last year. They have a couple playoffs games under their belt. And they're elite in their field. Ryan Lindgren is an elite shutdown defenseman. Adam Fox is just elite, period. Of course, Norris Trophy winner already at his young age. Keandre Miller is so underrated. Love him. Beautiful. And then, of course, you got Truba to beat the crap out of people. And, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, a perf he's a great playoff type guy for that. And you need that. You need a lot of guys to wear the, team, the other team down. That's why they got Andrew Kopp. And that's why they went out and got uh, uh, Goudreau last year and brought in Ryan Reeves. They know the importance of what you need in the playoffs. Uh, Reeves can't play on the ice worth a damn. But if he can catch up to some people, he can wear them down physically. Uh, and then Patrick Nemeth and the kid, Braden Schneider. It's not spectacular in the six, seven, five, six spot, but the top four is beautiful. And then you got Igor, Igor Shosturkin. I mean, he's a beast. But the Pittsburgh Penguins, if you talk about playoff experience, like Gunsel, Crosby, uh, Crosby and Rust, uh, Malkin, of course, there for got have cups in their on their mantle already. Jeff Carter has plenty of cups, um, and Chris Letang, of course. Their defense on paper is really not that great. Demolin Letang, I a lot of people say he's a giveaway machine. You know, he's a fantastic defenseman. He plays a riskier game and he gives some pucks away, but he is unbelievable as a defenseman. Very underrated. Marcus Pedersen and John Marino, though, it's not spectacular. And Michael Matheson and Chad Ruido, not spectacular either. But they get a lot out of that group. Sullivan is an incredible coach. The biggest problem, and I just can't, it's Casey DeSmith. There's no Jari. Jari didn't play well last year. I think we're going to see a similar thing as we did with the Islanders, except with uh, is they're going to play well everywhere, but goaltending probably lets them down here, going against just Sturkin with the Rangers. Um, I think, though, this could go seven games. This is one where I think it could go seven games, and the Rangers just barely pull it out. Shesterkin pulls it out for them. Um, a lot of close games could go either way, depending on the bounces. And that's the way Pittsburgh is a veteran team, and they know that that if they're going to win with this goaltender, they got to keep it tight, and they know how to do it. They play an excellent system, tight Pittsburgh Penguins. So do the Rangers. I think you're going to see a lot of low-scoring games here. I just have – I'm just – I'm putting it, I'm giving it to Shesterkin that he can, even if he gets, he's going to have some games where he gets outshot and he still wins a game. 
and they pull it out. It's one of the toughest series to really decide who to pick here. I could see Pittsburgh winning it, but I'm going with the Rangers. Okay, boys and girls, that's my full 42. I'm going to do the Western one tomorrow. Uh, just before in the morning, I'll have that out. But that's your Eastern picks. Sub up, everybody. Sub yourself up. Get all the fun. This off season, we're going to have trade talks like crazy, free agency. I'll be doing more playoff vids. You want to be part of it? I know you do. I know you do. All right. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.